Praise the Lord. You are now viewing the Greater Grace Temple Taylor YouTube webcast. We are a church united for the cause of Christ. Today's message is delivered by our youthful and dynamic pastor, Bishop Gary Harper. Please join our spirit-filled and anointed service, which is already in progress. the devil hitting me and knocking me down. It's time for me to get up. Time for me to get some strength. Time for me to get a backbone. Time for me to move forward in God. Time for me to be able to hold my head up so that I'm not always down. But I want to be up and I want to be anointed by the power of the almighty God. Oh, come on and give God some praise. Come on and give God some glory. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Revival is for the unsaved and is also for the saved. Honey, the devil don't like none of us. He wants us all to perish. Can I get a witness here today? He wants us all out of our mind. He wants us out there so far away from God that we can't even find our way back home. But I thank God for our helper because that's what the Lord is. The Lord is our helper. Even for those that don't have the Holy Ghost don't you know the Holy Ghost will move on you even before you receive it God will begin to work on your mind he'll begin to work on your spirit God will begin to tell you to do things you never thought about doing before that's because of the power of the Holy Ghost that goes to working in a child of God that knows God that begins to stray away from the Lord it is your helper that comes to your mind and talks to you it's your helper that speaks to you and tell you that you need to get your house in order. It is your helper to tell you it's time to get things straightened out. It's time to back away from the things that you're tired of being. It is your helper that tells you you've got something better in store for you. You don't have to live the life that you live in. It is your helper that comes to bring forth deliverance in your life. That comes to give you your right mind. It's your helper that's trying to pull you out of the clutches of the devil because God got freedom he has some freedom that he wants to put down in your soul oh come on and give God some praise come on and give God some glory oh yeah as we take a look here at the word of God the Bible speaks about Elisha the great prophet the man of God speaks about the time how God worked through him mightily you know there was a time when he went before the children of Israel he began to question them and he asked them the question how long halt ye between two opinions why are you confused and you you're going back and forth between two opinions. He said, if God be God, he said, serve him. If Baal be God, serve him. Lord have mercy. And the Bible says they had a contest on Mount Carmel where the prophets of Baal, they begin to call upon the name of their God. The name of their gods. And the Bible says they cried from morning to evening and did nothing happen. Oh, but Elisha put him back and said look here now let me build up an altar to my God and let me call upon the name of the Lord and he said the God that answers by fire let him be God and honey Elijah built up that altar began to call upon the name of the Lord and the Bible says God came down licked up the sacrifice and licked up the offering after that Elisha told the men of God just go out there and slay all the, the Baal's prophets over 450 men they slew Lord have mercy after that God sent rain upon the land because God wanted them to know that I'm with my man but I come to tell you children of God there's something that happened right after that when Jezebel got word that Elijah had slain the prophets of Baal she sent word out to Elisha that by this time tomorrow I'm going to take your life. And all of a sudden, fear be 
begin to come upon Elisha. I come to tell you, children of God, one moment, you can be on the mountaintop. The next minute, you can be down in the valley. How many of y'all have been there? One moment, you crying the Lord's victory. And the next moment, you run it for your life. Why? Because he opened up his mind to the enemy. And the enemy came in and attacked his thoughts. Lord have mercy. The Bible says that Elijah immediately, after raining down fire from heaven, and God already showing him that he was with him, already feeding him with a raven when the rain ceased upon the land, and God performing all kinds of miracles. But yet here the enemy comes, Jezebel. She comes out, put a threat on his life, had the man of God running for his life, backing up running. The Bible says he ran away, got up under a juniper tree, and began to have a pity party. Just like many of us do, sometimes we have pity parties. Begin to murmur and complain and find fault with the way maybe sometime God has taken us. And we wish that we were dead rather than living. But I come to tell you, children of God, you may be going through your baptism of fire. And the enemy may be whispering in your ears. But you got something to live for and not die. Oh, can I get a witness here today? Honey, was right there in his misery that the angels of God came and began to strengthen him. And I come to tell you, children of God, even right now, for those of you that's going through your battle, you're going through your struggle. God never leaves you. God never forsakes you. God is always with you. Even though you're having your pity party, God is still with you. Even though the enemy is attacking your mind, God is still with you. Even though you can't see no way out of your dilemma, you can't see no way out of your situation, I come to tell you that the angels of the Lord are still encamped around and about them that are going through. Oh yeah, you may be going through, but you got an angel with you. You may be going through, but you got some spiritual meat that God wants to give you. You may be going through, but God's got some supernatural drink that he wants you to have so that you can make it through this battle. Oh, come on and give God the praise. Come on and give God the glory. I said God's got a spiritual dream. Those angels begin to strengthen Elisha. Even though Elijah was plagued in his mind, he was doing everything God didn't want him to do. God didn't want him to run. God didn't want him to hide, but yet God was still there with him. And I come to tell you, God will go with you. Even when you're wandering in the wilderness, God will go with you. Even when you're wandering in your mind. And the Bible says that God, the angels of the Lord strengthened him not one time. But they strengthened him two times. Told him let get up and eat and go for the journey is too great for you. So he traveled in the strength of the meat. Traveling some 40 days and ran. Hid himself in a cave and there he was locked in. Because the enemy was fighting his mind. But it was there that the word of the Lord, it began to come to him and asked him the question, what doest thou here? Elisha, what are you doing down here in this fit? What are you doing down here in this cave? Sometimes children of God, we got to ask ourselves the question, why are we in the shape that we're in? How come we're hiding in some corner? How come we're buried? Trying to get away from God. God, can I get a witness? And there he was hiding, hallelujah, from the presence of the Lord. And the Lord asked him the question, what are you doing here? He said, I've been very jealous for you, Lord. The children of Israel, they've forsaken your covenant. They've thrown down your altars. they slain the prophets with the edge of the sword. And I'm the only one left. How come, how many times I know the devil, he'll try to make you think you're the only one that's going through you the only one that's got a battle but I come to tell you all of God's children they've got a battle on their hands 
Oh, all of God's children got something that they've got to fight through, something they've got to press through, something that they've got to go on in the name of the Lord. So there he was. The Lord told him, he said, look, I want you to stand upon the mount. God said, I want to talk with you there, but instead of standing on the mount, Elijah was there crouched down, hid in the cave, and all of a sudden there came a great wind that passed by. Oh, the tenacious-